Hey guys, I am back in the studio for day 24 of Vlogmas. Oh my gosh, day 24, just two videos left. Ah, whew, this Vlogmas has been a whirlwind, Whirl, whirlwind. <laughs> and I wasn't planning on having my relaunch be the center of the madness, but here we are and I'm just so excited to finally be open. And that is the theme of today's video. I wanted to talk about how my relaunch went, how much we made in sales, and just talk through the whole launch process, things that people don't really talk about too much. Yeah, it'll just be covered in this video. It'll be chatty, it'll be rambly, there's not gonna be much order to it. And I'm gonna be doing this all and also getting that lotion that I made yesterday into some jars. We're gonna add some fragrance oil to it. Yeah, so. If that's what you wanna watch, then stick around for all of that. So I'm gonna say the number right off the bat, and that is how much we made since we relaunched. And these are numbers that are current as of right now. We reopened the shop on November 13th, and from that day till today, we have made $8,077 and a few cents, the exact number I'm gonna put here. That is incredible. I am so, so happy about that. I don't think I've ever made that much in a month, ever. There have been some expenses that have chipped away at that amount, and that's not the money that is eventually going to end up in our pockets. I'll get into all of that, but here is the lotion that I made yesterday. I didn't cover it because I didn't want the evaporated air to rain back down into the lotion. What I'm going to do next is measure how much lotion is in there, split it into two, and add fragrance to it. I need to make two scents today with that lotion. We are making our High Tide and Twilight Woods scent. And those two have been like the top five scents that have sold really well for me. High Tide is an ocean type scent. It's very fresh, very soothing and relaxing. And so is Twilight Woods. It's a lavender scent with some cedar wood. And it smells also very, very nice. So I'm just going to transfer this cream into this larger bowl to see how much there is so I can split it up evenly. So that number, $8,077, even though that's a pretty good sales number for me, there are quite a few expenses. I had to invest in a few bulk ingredients, bulk supplies. I had to buy a lot of jars to accommodate all the orders and also to build up a stock. I had to get a lot of basic ingredients too. I, I stocked up on hemp seed oil, on glycerin, on sweet almond oil, and I bought in amounts that I had never bought before. So that took a big chunk out of my profits. I had to pay for some shipping costs. I currently charge a flat rate, and there's a million ways you can do this. You can charge shipping by the weight, but I like the flat rate because I think from a customer perspective, it's it helps them it helps convert them better versus a variable shipping amount. I like that I can communicate that number right off the bat when they enter the website. There are a lot of unseen expenses like our electricity bill and our water bill. All of that cuts into those profits. And that's what you have to keep in mind when starting a soap business is that the money that you make either through Shopify or through your in-person sales, a lot of that is going to go right back into funding your business, especially at the very beginning where you have to start to build up your inventory and also your supplies in these bulk amounts that cost quite a bit. So it can be kind of a struggle getting off the ground and, and increasing your profits. There's a few ways you can help that though. And if you're finding that you're making a lot of sales consistently, then you have a customer base that really likes your product. That's a proven metric that you can count on. So one of the things you can do is to start planning ahead. You can start scheduling out things so that your time is better used. You can start to invest in bigger equipment. And yes, spending more money is going to cut into your profits, but if spending that money will help you produce more product, then it's actually better for you in the long run. But all of these are personal decisions depending on how quickly you wanna grow and whether or not you're able to sustain that level of growth. Now for me, I've always been a fan of a slow and steady growth model. So I need to see a, a repeated pattern over a long period of time before I can comfortably make that plunge into spending a lot of money towards something, whether that's towards supplies or equipment. 
And if you're a risk averse person, then that's the approach I think you guys should take too. I would never invest a lot of money into anything, whether it's my business or in my personal life, unless I saw an actual need for it. And one way to know if you have an actual need for the thing is if you have enough cash in your business account to buy the thing completely without putting it on credit. That's the model that I go by. I don't like putting things on credit. I know that that might change down the road. Say I start to collect more and more clients and customers and I definitely need to invest in things, but I don't quite have the cash for it yet. I have a whole year of proven sales that tells me that this investment, if I have to put it on a credit card, is absolutely worth it because I have the numbers to show how quickly I can pay that thing off. Or I can slowly save up for the thing and the more sales I have, the quicker I'll get there. So starting up a business is gonna look a lot like that. It's it's a lot of decision making. And these are tough decisions to make because you don't know if you're making the right decision. It's hard to see the future, whether or not this investment into this thing is going to pay off for you down the road. And if something that you've spent a lot of money on doesn't turn out to be something that was money well spent, you wouldn't be the first person to have done something like that. There are so many things in this business that I wish I didn't spend money or time on, and yet it happened and that's unfortunate, but that's how I, I learn. And I can get upset about that or I can just move on with my life, which is what ultimately I chose to do. <laughs> now, another thing you have to keep in mind if you have a really good sales month is to think about the time of year in which that sales month happened. So for example, if you got a huge injection of sales in December, well, you know, you have to think that a huge part of that was that it was that it's Christmas and people are more spendy around Christmas because they're not just buying for themselves, but they're buying for for their family and friends. So most businesses will see a huge uptick in orders. If you have made a great profit in December and want to keep it going throughout January, February, March, through those lean months, then you're going to need to think of a strategy to keep that ball rolling. And there's lots of ways to do that. You can have sales, you can try different kinds of products. Like it, there's a million ways you can, you can do that. Or you can just plan for that specific time of year to be able to sustain your business throughout the whole year. And that's kind of a riskier model to take. One great way to keep your business going and making money even after the Christmas season is to start acquiring wholesale customers who already have established businesses. So they do have more steady customers. That is definitely an income stream that I plan on adding in 2024. I know that when I had my wholesale customers, when I lived in Calgary and when I lived in Ontario, it was those wholesale orders that continued to boost my income throughout the year. Okay, so I have my two lotions separated. Let's do high tide first. I think a smart thing to do also during this busy time of year is to pay really close attention to your customers. I've seen a few comments now saying that they would love to buy my lotion, but they want an unscented version. That tells me that there are people out there that would buy my lotion if it was available fragrance free. So that's something I'm going to add as an option in 2024. I think a great business model that a lot of soap businesses do for January and other times of year is to create products that are limited edition so it creates that sense of scarcity and really does help to convert people into customers products that make people feel things if your product can make a person feel something that is incredible there's all the typical stuff you can do but one thing you can try is products that no one is doing for that time of year to stand out i think i'm going to try a little bit of both in 2024 <laughs> to see what works because I'm still in that experimental stage with my business. I have a few ideas and I'm excited to to talk about them come the new year. Oh, this smells so good. So I'm really excited with how that launch went. I think it's incredibly promising. We are going to try different things in 2024. Some might work out, some might be flops, but at least I know. I get a lot of comments from people all the time that they're so nervous to launch. They're really afraid of launching and not getting any sales. And the only way you'll find out is launching and seeing. And if you get zero sales on day one, guess what? We've all been there and it sucks. I know 
It's a, a hard pill to swallow when you're literally rejected. <laughs> and this could be after months of work, months of research and development, months of deciding what scents are going to be on your core line and months of building a brand. But if it happens, you just gotta move on and take it as very strong feedback about what you've presented to the world. And it's not that the world doesn't want what you've got to offer. Maybe your approach to how you presented that product to them, maybe that needs some work. Maybe you need a better marketing plan. Maybe you need to fix your packaging. Maybe you need to engage with your customers more on your social media. There are so many things you can do to turn a bad launch around and reframe it instead into a really hard learning experience that you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. When I first launched my website in 2017, I think I got a couple of orders and they were all from people who knew me. Some really supportive and sweet friends who knew that this was coming. So as soon as I pressed publish, or as soon as I turned my Shopify store on, they were there with their support and I appreciate that so much. But after that initial support from friends and family, it was all up to me to try to convince strangers that I was worth buying. And I wish I can tell you that after that initial push, the customers came rolling in, but nope, they did not. And looking back, I can see why. My brand was all over the place. I didn't know who exactly I was selling to. I was so green. I was so brand new at this whole thing. It was definitely a rough start. I'm pretty sure that that's the experience for, for most of us. You just don't see that side of it because by the time you run into other soap businesses, what you see is a very successful launch and you don't know that there's been years building up to that. Multiple, multiple years of struggle. Oh, okay. We have our two cents and I'm ready to pipe into jars. All right, so I have my piping bag in my candle wick or candle wax pot. I'm just gonna put my lotion into here. I remember our first farmer's market. I was so excited to do one, finally, because I had been living in Toronto and we had just moved to this small town and I found the town's farmer's market um, Instagram and I messaged the organizer or the person who was in charge of social media at the time wanting to apply to be a vendor and that message was ignored. <laughs> they, she didn't respond to me and I was you know upset about that a little bit but I actually went physically to the farmer's market and met her there. I said to her that I had asked about an application and she what did she say? She was very apologetic, but, but she was able to give me a physical application, like a piece of paper that I filled out right then and there. And I signed up for my first farmer's market. So the leading up to that whole farmer's market, I was buying things like display shelves. What did I buy? I bought this thing from Ikea and it was so bulky. It didn't fold at all. And it took up a lot of space in our then car, which was a Honda Fit, which is a tiny car. But we showed up, we set up our booth, this brand new soap company that didn't know what the heck they were doing and sat back to see what would happen. And we made $30 that day. <laughs> it cost us $25 to be there. So by most accounts, by everyone's account, I don't know who would see that as a success. That was a huge fail and it was so discouraging. But through that first experience, I saw how people interacted with my product. I saw which scents people liked. I was able to talk to people and people that didn't buy then, when they saw us showing up week after week, we started to see those people who would pass us by start to be curious about us. And then we were able to sell more things over time. And by the time summer rolled around, we had a few regular customers that would stop by our table and buy our soaps. We got the attention of a few people who were, who were shop owners in the area and wanted our soaps in their shops. We were able to connect with a bed and breakfast owner who wanted our soaps at our bed and breakfast. We were able to really connect with people and that started the initial ball rolling on our company. And around that same time, the springtime, my Etsy shop started to get some attention. It started off with one sale and then more sales started to come in. 
And then a lot more sales started to come in. I don't know how, but the Etsy algorithm gods decided to pay attention to a few of my listings, which had been up for, they had been up for almost a year without much traction at all. And I started to get orders and it exploded into this unmanageable, <laughs> overwhelming thing where I needed to make decisions and I wasn't ready for them. My branding was nowhere near ready for this. I, I wasn't ready for it. I did not have the experience shipping back then that I do now. So I wasn't packaging things properly. It was a whole, whole mess. Oh my God, it was a really, really stressful time. I remember looking at Kale saying, I'm so overwhelmed and he offered to leave his job. And that was really risky for us to do back then, but we had the sales, we had the demand. It was kind of a no brainer to go in that direction. So when he did, he was able to focus on the business and help me on a more full-time level. And that really helped us be present at farmer's markets because Kale was able to devote his time to be there and he was able to network and meet more people. And we grew slowly over the next two years in that town. Around that time is when I started my YouTube. So through my YouTube, I was able to start to draw people into my Shopify store and start to make sales off of there. So I've piped the lotions and now I just have to cap them. I'd like to conclude this rambly long chat by saying it's gonna be hard in the beginning. If you wanna step your toe into starting this as a business, it's gonna be really, really, really hard. But don't see it as a really big, hard thing. Just take it day by day, task by task. It's gonna feel overwhelming. It's gonna feel like it's too much. But if you just focus on the task at hand right in front of you, just do that. And after completing a million of these tasks day by day, you're gonna find that you have this whole new set of skills that are like little bricks that are building who you are as an awesome small business owner. That might not happen overnight. It might be a long journey, but it's so worth it to me. I love this, I'm living my dream. And if it took me 10 years to get to this point, I still, would think it's worth it because I'm ecstatic. I can't believe this is my job and I'm so thankful every single day. If you wanna get your hands on one of these amazing hemp creams, then you can find that on my website, which is linked down below. And I said I was gonna wait until 2024 to add the unscented option, but by the time you're seeing this video, it will be there. So if you want to try this lotion without any scent, you can do that. Just go to the drop down and select unscented. But if you wanna make this cream exactly how I did it, then you can also do that. That's on my Patreon, which is also linked down below. And speaking of my patrons, thank you to each and every one of you, especially my bubble BFFs. Their names are over here. Without your support, without your kind words, without your messages, this would be a lot harder to do. So thank you so much. And finally, last but not least, the people who watch me, your messages on yesterday's video were particularly sweet. And I think it's because I was talking about my ups and downs as a YouTuber. And to see that there are people that have been following me since the beginning with all of the changes, with all of the different things that I've tried, thank you. I really do mean that from the bottom of my heart because much like making products, making videos for people who enjoy watching them is another huge, huge passion of mine. So it's because of you guys that I get to live this dream as well. Oh, and quickly before I go, people who have ordered are now gonna receive a little sample of something. These are my lotions in a tiny, oh, in a tiny little sample size. And I'm gonna slip these guys into orders so that people can start seeing, people can start smelling rather, the scents that I have. Um, I don't have the option yet to pick exactly what sample you're gonna get. It's gonna be a little surprise. But yeah, it'll be a way to start discovering the different scents on my core line. So that is awesome. Thank you to the person who suggested that. I really think that's gonna be a huge upgrade to my business and to my customer experience as a whole. But that is it for today, guys. We have just one more video and then it's gonna be a bit of a break. I really do wanna take a break and just reset for 2024. 
I'll probably post another video in a couple of days, but more on that in tomorrow's video. But until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I will see you in that next video. Bye, guys.